What's happening, Internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review. Today, by request, I'm looking at Sabion 10. Now, I have had comments in the past about the pronunciation of Sabion. Is it Sabion? Sabion? I'm not entirely sure. I've always called it Sabion, but then I get comments saying that I pronounced it wrong. Anywho, the pronunciation doesn't really matter. After all, it is an Italian dessert. But what we're looking at today is the GNOME edition of Sabion. Now, it comes in, of course, ver many different desktop varieties because it is a rolling release and it's based on, that's right, Gen 2. Now this distribution has given me an interesting experience thus far. I, I could probably safely say I've had more issues with this distro than, uh, than any other distro that I've tried to install over the past year, but I'm gonna try not to let that affect the way that I review the distribution overall, uh, because there were just a few specifics that uh, were specific to my hardware. However, issues like uh, no sound and no fonts when I finished installing it, and I had some upgrading issues as well, does give it a little bit of a knock in my book. So I thought I might let you know about that ahead of time, and that this distro did give me a few hiccups compared to what most other distros do nowadays. But with all that said, Sabian as a distribution is designed to be a rolling release for power users, for everyday users, and for really any use that you want to adapt it to. As a general rule, Gen 2 is a very modular distribution in that you can tweak the, the kernel, the boot up process, and everything in between to tailor your specific needs for what you want to get out of it. For instance, if you're just running a server, then you can really trim the kernel down so it's not taking up too much power. If you're running to a run like an audio workstation, so you want a, a low latency kernel, you can also customize the setup for that. Of course, a regular desktop user is just gonna leave most things as default. And I think in that sense, the modularity of Gentoo and and therefore Sabion, it does have its plus and minuses in that. Having all those, having that very modular structure there, um, of course, makes it very adaptable but then I find that the boot up process and the login process uh, of, of Sabayon on, on, on the same hardware that I test out all my distributions on is uh, considerably slower than, uh, than say Ubuntu or Fedora or OpenSUSE. Now, once you're actually logged into the desktop environment, uh, the applications fly, it's not really an issue. And GNOME 3.6, I might add, is actually quite a bit snappier on Sabayon than it is on Ubuntu, for example. Now, like I mentioned, Sabayon is a rolling release, so that means that you get all the latest updates. So, for example, here we are running GNOME 3.6 with all the touchscreeny goodness that you can imagine. Now, some improvements that I have noticed since I last reviewed Sabayon, which was uh, which is Sabayon version 8, was the uh, application management, which is one of the things that I said needed to be changed, and they have indeed changed it, and they've changed it for the better. You can see here we've got a very minimalistic application browser, and apart from the fact we've got a few font separation issues here with the theming, in order to install an application, you simply have to search for it, hit the enter key, and you are presented with some search results. Double click on that result and you get some ratings, you get some download sizes and required space, which I'm not exactly sure why Firefox would take up 700 megs, but there you go. You get the checksum and you also get quite a few dependencies and also the licenses that that application uses, so you know what you're getting yourself into as far as free software is concerned. They do have quite a nice um, supply of applications in their repositories. And they do quite a good job of keeping those uh, apps maintained at their latest versions. It's not quite as bleeding edge as what something like Arch is, but it is a rolling release and you do get some pretty stable applications. I haven't had any application crashes in the few days that I've been using this as my daily driver. Now, when it comes to updates, you have the Magneto Update Manager, which basically is a little icon which sits down here in your system tray and it alerts you every time you start up the computer whether you have updates or not. It automatically refreshes the repositories and it will tell you what updates you have have, what possible breakages may occur if you install those updates and also config files that that are going to be changed because of those updates. Now I really like this because if something does go wrong after the update you can automatically backtrack to the config files that have changed and reverse any changes that may have screwed the system up. So I like in the fact that the package manager is definitely built for the fact that it is a rolling release. It's also worth noting that depending on what repository you choose you can elect to have updates on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, or a daily basis. Therefore, that dictates how up-to-date your system is. As I've mentioned before, one thing that I do like about Sabion is the vast selection of pre-installed software. You do, it is a pretty heavy download at 1.6, 1.7 gigs. And again, I think that is the modular nature of Gen 2 kicking in there. But you do get a good selection of apps here by default. You get a handful of games, and also it is worth noting that they do have the popular first-person shooter Xenotic in their 
repository so I'm going to be doing a review of Xenotic actually in the near future keep my gaming series going and you can see we've got the latest versions of GIMP, LibreOffice, Shotwell, Chromium is your default web browser I installed Firefox myself we've got a few links here to different Sabion websites and including Gentoo documentation download locations reporting bugs the git repos help their home page etc of course default application selection should suit the everyday users needs um, but it's it's not too much of a big deal because uh, installing software now is not that hard at all of course XBMC Media Center is here by default as well which is nice and actually they have a boot menu option where you can boot just to the XBMC Media Center so if you are just going to be installing this on a, on a nice little discrete desktop that runs next to your HDTV then you can just have XBMC running thus saving all the resources for playing back high definition video etc. Again, that modular adaptable nature of Savion kicking in. Of course all the codecs and flash and wine is going to be installed out of the box as well so you're ready to go as far as what your system is able to do and as I am running the 64-bit version it is going to be using a fair few resources as well as because of the fact I'm screen capturing as well but you can see I'm using about a gig of RAM with a few applications running and of course the screen casting which is a little bit less than the Ubuntu side of things but like I said boot up login time is a little bit slower but overall performance across the desktop is actually a little bit quicker. Now Sabion of course does have the Mate edition as well as as KDE, LXDE, XFCE ready there to install either from the package manager or from the ISO that you download. So you've got quite a few options out of the box. And it also is worth noting that usually any documentation that applies to Gentoo will also apply to Sabion here because of the fact that they haven't, the Apple hasn't fallen too far from the tree. Although Sabion uses its own separate repositories, it, it hasn't really changed too much in essence to the way that Gentoo works if you do want to get down and dirty with the source code and the tarballs of software and kernel mods that you want to install. As far as GNOME 3.6 is concerned, I actually like it a, bit, a fair bit more on here than I did on Fedora. I think just having a more complete software selection out of the box and also having some better icons, thank you elementary team, lead to a much nicer uh, GNOME 3.6 experience despite the fact that it is still rather limited uh, in the core apps section. Of course it looks polished and we most of us know what GNOME 3.6 looks like. It is worth mentioning though that if you do want to install some extensions to the GNOME shell then you are going to need to use Firefox because unfortunately the backend tool that they use to add extensions to the GNOME Shell desktop doesn't really work with Chromium or Chrome or any WebKit based browsers, so that's a little bit unfortunate. But after installing Firefox I can add and remove uh, GNOME Shell extensions here to customize my desktop a bit, which I think is entirely necessary with a desktop environment like GNOME Shell. Now, as a curious Linux user, I would love to know what the main hallmarking differences are between a distribution like Sabion and of course the parent di distro which is Gentoo. So if any of you find some interesting documentation online about the differences between the two, then definitely let me know on the comments below or let me know on Google Plus if you if you if YouTube comments aren't going to be allowing your web links. And also let me know what you think. Should I review the parent distro which is Gentoo? Obviously a little bit more complicated to set up compared to the Anaconda installer that comes with Sabion? Or do you think Sabion holds a Gen 2 experience fairly well? Of course, as always, thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button if you did indeed like the video and subscribe if you like this kind of content on a regular basis. And I shall see you all again in the very near future, picking up the game series hopefully again and many more distro reviews to come. Of course, feel free to follow me on Google+, Twitter and the recent edition of Facebook. Links in the description below and also on my homepage so you can follow me on Facebook as well. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.